from this video, we'll start looking at the interactions of dislocations with different microstructural features. In this video specifically, we'll look at the dislocation grain boundary interactions, aka the whole patch relationship. I'm pretty sure in the undergrad material science class, you learned something called grain boundary strengthening. Basically, what this tells you is the more grain boundaries you have in the material, the stronger the material will be. In another word, if you have smaller grains in the material, the material will become stronger. And such relationship is called the whole patch relationship. To express this mathematically, you have sigma y equals to sigma i plus k d to the power of minus half. Sorry about the mistake in the note here. The last sigma is supposed to be d. Where sigma y is the yield strength of the material, sigma i is the intrinsic resistance of lattice to dislocation motion, and k is called the locking parameter. d is the grain size. And straight away from this expression, you can tell by reducing the grain size d, you can increase sigma y, the yield strength. And this is called the whole patch relationship. So far, all what you have seen, you have learned that in the undergrad material science course. What you're going to see next is more at a grad school level. Fundamentally, the whole patch relationship can be described based on the dislocation pile up model at the grain boundary. Assume we have two grains here, one on the left, one on the right. In the grain on the left, we have like one array of dislocations piled up at the grain boundary. The stress level acting on the very first dislocation, let's call that tau c. Below tau c, the dislocation will be blocked by the grain boundary, but above tau c, the dislocation will glide past the grain boundary. Based on this model, SLB and the co-authors, they came up with a mathematical expression, n is equal to alpha tau s d divided by g b, where n is the number of dislocations in the pile up, alpha is a constant, tau s is the average shear stress on the slip plane, d is the grain size, g is the shear modulus, b is the Burgess vector. Then tau c is equal to n tau s. Substitute n into this equation, you get tau c is equal to alpha tau s square d over gb. Also, tau s, the average shear stress on the slip plane, can be written down as tau minus tau i, where tau is the applied stress, and tau i is the lattice resistance against the dislocation motion. Substitute tau s into the above equation and do some rearrangement. You can have tau on the left hand side and tau i and d on the right hand side. From this equation, you can see tau has the linear relationship with d to the power of minus half. Does this ring a bell? We can also look at the complicated term tau c gb over alpha to the power of half. This is actually k, the dislocation locking parameter by the grain boundary. In the original whole patch relationship, we use sigma. In the dislocation pile up model, we use tau. For both tau and the sigma, they have a linear relationship with d to the power of minus half. Since we are discussing dislocation grain boundary interactions, I want to introduce a concept called Taylor factor. I'm pretty sure in undergrad material science class or mechanics class, you have learned sigma y is equal to m tau c, where m is the Schmi factor, sigma y is the yield strength of the single crystal, and the tau c is the critical resolve shear stress on the activated slip system. You also should know the value of m, the Schmi factor, cannot be greater than half. In polycrystal metals, which contains a lot of grain boundaries, you have a very similar relationship. Sigma y is equal to capital M tau c, and capital M is called the Taylor factor. Assuming the grains in the polycrystalline material has a random orientation, then the Taylor factor 
for FCC medals is around 3 and 2.75 for BCC medals. I'll do a very quick verbal example here. Assume that you know the critical resolved shear stress of aluminum single crystal is 30 MPa. The yield strength of the polycrystalline aluminum should be around 90 MPa. We can further refine the model by adding the grain boundary contribution to the strength using the whole patch relationship. One interesting thing to point out is for whole patch relationship, it works very well for micron scale grains. Once the grain size is reduced down to the nanoscale, the whole patch relationship does not hold anymore. The illustration on this figure is from a paper by Quack and Professor Sholovitz published in JMPS. On the x-axis, it's d to the power of minus half. If the value for d to the power of minus half increases, the grain size decreases. From the figure, you can see initially, as you decrease the grain size, the yield strength increases. However, after that, it will reach a plateau, and eventually, the yield strength will decrease as the grain size decreases further. The loss of the strengthening effect with increasing number density or a refraction of grain boundaries is due to a switch of deformation mechanism. In a polycrystalline material with fairly large grains, the plasticity is largely carried out by dislocation slip. More grain boundaries will lead to more dislocation slip pile up, and you get the strengthening effect. However, for nanocrystalline samples, Dislocation slip may not be the dominant plasticity carrier anymore. Other mechanisms such as grain boundary sliding, grain rotation can be activated, and the dislocation pile-up explanation cannot be used anymore. I hope you have learned something new in this video about the dislocation grain boundary interactions, especially why in most cases grain boundaries can lead to strengthening, but in some extreme cases it does not lead to strengthening. In the next video, we'll look at dislocation-dislocation interactions.